latte. Welcome back to a very informative video here at Barham Engines, mate, isn't it? Today, we have got two stripped down progress sort of reports to do. Yes. That people have been, one of which people have been wanting to see, mate, and that would yeah. be the Focus RS Mark III. What did we find? <laughs> First of all, let's have a little look at this V6, mate, that you've pretty much finished here. Doesn't that look good? Does look nice. You're going to be seeing that on the Facebook page. Yep. With some fancy photo editing from yourself to make <laughs> it look very fancy. Yeah, it looks Not good that it on. doesn't look fancy in real life, because it does. Yeah, I'm Absolutely. really happy with it. Yeah, hopefully it looks lovely, the, uh, mate. customer will be as well. Hopefully. But... Um, so hopefully get that picked up in the next week. That'll be nice. Yep. Make some room for the, uh, for the next batch of engines. Yep. Um, but today, mate, we have been, I've basically got my friend Russell's engine here, the one that he's previously bought or recently bought for an absolute steal. Not going to tell you how much, I'm just telling you, it's probably the cheapest second-hand Cosworth engine in the world. Probably. And, and we were all, from, from our experience of stripping these so-called all-been-done motors, especially when they're on the cheaper side. Never good news, is it? We always expect the worst, and usually we find the worst. Yep. But have we found the worst? We'll be coming back to that in a minute. Um, and then the Focus RS Mark III. So this is EcoBoost. Yeah, it's one of, pretty the, much. one of the, in the EcoBoost family, yeah. It is, yeah. So it's a modern type aluminium block, aluminium head, triffid. It is a bit, it's a bit of a, odd setup it's got all the vvt stuff and obviously it's turbo and got balance shafts and all the rest of it so yeah so this is um the customer has bought this with a known engine issue so yes. fortunately this again probably one of the cheapest focus rs mark threes in the country yep but yeah he's bought it with a known engine issue and it had a uh, very distinctive tapping which looked, sounded like the top end, but it was a, a very dramatic sort of tap. Yeah, it's like, sort of sounded like everything was vibrating from the, <laughs> from the little video you showed me. It but. did. Now these things are renowned for doing the cranks. So we did suspect a bottom end. Sometimes when a bottom end like, or a big end has gone that bad, we all know, we've said it before, the piston can come up because there's that much clearance, the piston can come up, hit the head and it then sort of resonates through the head and sounds like yeah. a top end tap. The only thing is, when I took the head off, there was no evidence of that at all, so. Right, okay. It was sort of a head scratcher at that point because that's sort of what we were expecting really, wasn't it? Yeah. So the customer's bought this car, as I say, he's got it cheap enough really, no, with a known engine issue. Now, this engine has supposedly been all done and forged. Um, so it was a complete unknown as far as he was concerned and uh, fingers crossed it's got the bits in they say it's it's got in so it was meant to have trick rods uh, Marla power pack pistons yep meant to have had the bearings done, basically meant to have been done and it's also meant to have had the block mod which is uh, the brace that goes in the top of the block because the two litre no it's a 2.3 this isn't it yeah, I think it is a, yeah, sorry, yeah, 2. a 2.3. 3, and they like to use the 2-litre block, don't they, as a mod? The 2.3 is a, an open deck, um, whereas the 2-litre, same bore size, but it's a closed deck, so it's a solid block, so they do like to use yeah. the 2-litre block. So this engine has supposedly been done, but we have seen plenty of times in the past, and going by the paperwork the customer's got and the price it's cost, I would say what they've probably done is a forge sort of rough build where they've took the head off, took the sump in, maybe kept the block in situ, put the pistons and rods in. You buy this insert here, which in effect sort of braces up the top of the block. Um, the only thing is with these, and they, they can just sort of tap this in in place. Only yeah. thing is with this type of brace, and we've had this before, mate, where it, does dis it can distort the liners at the top. Yep, it's a bit like on the five pot RS motors. Same thing. Where they put a wedge in between the two cylinders. Drive a wedge in between yeah, the cylinders. Yeah, which sort of just throws them all over the place. Yeah, and measuring these bores, I would say it's evident that that's probably what's happened. Yeah, because so you've got... 
We're well, still on a standard bore, 87 and a half. Like the non-thrust side, you're looking at like on size, then that way, on the thrust, that's like two thou big. Thou and a quarter, it's all a bit What's weird. it like right up the top? Up the top, it's over three. Yeah. So it's like, it has, it's either, whether it's a wear thing, or if it's that brace that's sort of knocking everything a bit all yeah. over the place, it could be one or the other, but I'm sure that brace isn't helping anything. No. In that respect anyway. So the pistons, um, the rings are dead sharp, so I'd probably recommend at least new rings, but if he decides that he wants to keep these pistons, um, I mean, the old control ring looks like it's a bit stuck, really. Yeah. It ain't great, mate. I think this, I think this they, has been over has got, at some point. It has obviously got all the, all the bits. It's got the bridgeways and the... Um, Marla power pack pistons. Yeah, so it's Bridgeway I beam rods. Yeah, they're lovely rods. Um, so I'm going to suggest to him, ideally, for a warranty, you know, situation, he needs to bore it and put new pistons in. But if he chooses to use yeah. these pistons with new rings and we hone them out, obviously we can't guarantee it. We don't anyway on a D glaze, but um, those bores are in effect sort of oval, aren't they? Yeah, they are a bit. Um, this the, one, that's the funny one. That's the funny one. Um, so <clears throat> we were suspecting a crank on this, and I did. I always state to customers, the worst case scenario, which you're not going to be able to tell when you, until you strip it, is it can pinch up a main and spin the main in the yep. block, and that scraps the block mm, a lot of the time. It does. Um, so what we were looking for here is something that's going to create this tapping up the top. So obviously cam gear and that all looked okay yeah all the cams looked fine i mean you can even see like all the buckets and everything all look really really uniform all yeah. sort of good um cam bearing or you know cam bearings cam look good look so good. We're, we're, we're sure that oil's been getting up the top yeah it's been getting up there and not damaged anything or anything main bearings main bearings looked pretty much perfect to be honest oh really look so we've got no oil starvation issue with no um, got them in the cupboard here in the cradle still, but they all look pretty good. I mean, there's a little bit of wear, but it's nothing. No, nothing drastic. more than nothing more than you'd expect. Yeah, just sort of normal wear. Um, big ends, different story. Totally different story. Have a look at them big ends there, mate. They're sort of down to the copper in areas, so this yep. has been getting some sort of hard life. And not only that, but they're hammered out like they're properly hammered. I would say. At some point, this has been over fueling, evident by the ring wear. Um, and if we've been getting fuel in the oil, but also maybe part of the ignition map or something like that to put extra load on the bearings. That yeah. tends to be what happens on the yeah, turbo I think stuff. It's gonna be... And a lot of the time, the map or the load on the pistons can have a drastic effect to the, the wear on the big yeah. end shells. Um, so that's not good. I, the crank don't look bad, does it? So crank looks okay. Whether it'll measure okay is another story. But yeah. So by the look of those out. bearings, the tension's gone, so they sort of fell yeah. out. So yeah, they did. if it hadn't already, we were about to do a big end on this anyway. Or spin a bearing, or worse. Well, I mean that's sort of the worst, but yeah. you know, knacker a rod, knacker the crank. That's it. Yeah. Um, but we did actually find the reason for the tapping, didn't we, mate? We did. Or you did. Which one is it? This one. That one. This one. Very unusually, you've noticed that down the side of there, mate. Yeah, I spotted this sort of swarf almost coming off. So in this rod, in most rods now, you get a, a with the circlip type, you get a, a bronze bush in the small end, and that bronze bush has just broken up. It has. And we've got small end place. So basically it's that piston is doing that, and flapping about. Just you know, bearing in mind this has been in the wash, look how black the top of that piston still is. Yeah. Like, it, they're carboned up really bad. Yeah, right. I mean, the guy, the th I think the history of it is, it's been, ch the map's been changed. Right. Um, and he hasn't really had a reason why, but I would suspect it's but because got, of some reason. I mean, like, like, you can see how much that's been slapping about and all over the place. It's wearing yeah. in all weird places up around the that's top. That's it, and that's because this side of the bush, by the feel of it, is worn it's more just, than the other, yeah. and it's basically doing that. So this side of the piston is tapping the head or something, and it's just or flapping just, about, yeah, so. Knocking. That'd be the problem, mate. 
Yeah. So, but I've, um, yeah, I've sort of checked everything, you know, quickly checked everything so far. Um, cam phases, they're all right. Yeah. So they're not full of swarf or anything. There wasn't much swarf in the sump. No. It's only a little bit. To be honest, with like the bronze, it's it goes really fine, doesn't it? The yeah. Swarf, so. That's it, yeah. Most likely hasn't damaged much, although it has damaged the oil pump. Yeah. So we're going to but be looking yeah. at another oil pump. Yes. Report-wise, we're going to be, I think you'll probably be getting back to the customer suggesting we either get another rod or maybe we can make a new small end bush. Yeah. Do you know what? Looking at them pistons now, I'm not totally keen on them anymore. Like, no. I, at first, I thought they might go again, but... No, I think it's we're going to be recommending as a, the sides and everything. Yeah, the skirts are not great, mate. So I think and there's probably what looks like impregnated debris from the small end bush. There's a lot of bronze impregnated yeah. in there. So I'm going to suggest he gets new pistons. We we'll go for the 88 mil ones, rebore yeah. the block. It's probably um, the best way, isn't it? It is, mate. And I certainly the, wouldn't for, be even for the cost of the rods. It's probably worth just having some fresh rods, really. Yeah unfortunately so but we'll measure them and see what the score measure is. it all up see what um what the score is like you say mate and give him the glad tidings yeah but it's always nice to find a problem it is and stripping an engine like this you know ther look, sort of bit by bit and measuring things as you go you can tell a lot yeah by what's happening yeah, by can. stripping it so if it come in bits a lot of the time you're not really going to be able to tell no on to russell's cosworth Sound like Jeremy Clarkson, don't I? So, Russell's bought this engine nice and cheap. And you think, alarm bells? What's this going to be like? What's this going to be like? I mean, we've got, most of the time, if people bring an engine in to check, even if they've spent good money on it, you usually it turns out. You find things where it's like, that needs sorting out. Or... Fair dues if it's not, not meant to have been built. And they say, yeah. oh no, it's all been running right. We know half the time, 80, 90% chance it's going to be knackered, isn't it? A lot of the time, yeah. But when you buy one that's super cheap and all meant to have been done, mate, I would... That is a gamble to me. Yeah. Well... And Russell's one for almost, a gamble. You almost just want to expect that it's um, no good. You do. But... So, what have we found? Well, a nice surprise, really. Huh? Not only has this got everything in it it was supposed to have, but it's better than I actually thought. Mm which has shocked Russell and I. So, it's meant to have had Cosworth pistons, forge H-section rods, long rod setup mine, so you've got long rod, adjusted pin height to the crown of the piston. Yep. Sure enough, we do have that. So we've nice. got PEC rods, H-section rods, Ooh. and it's the long rod setup there. So these rods are longer than standard. And these are the Cosworth pistons, which are a pretty much sort of visually like a copy of the original Marlers, um, right. but they're made by Cosworth. They're an old school pist piston. I know that because I've seen that part number before. Um, and it's a pretty old piston this, but it is a long rod set up. So the piston is further, the, the pins further up towards the crown. It's got the trademark green Teflon coating. Yep. Um, done very little work, I think these. Could do with yeah. a set of rings, really. Um, but yeah, as I say, the 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 peck rods I think are a, a lot like the. They're all a bit the same, aren't they? May probably yeah. may probably come from the same factory, but quite expensive though, aren't they? The peck stuff. Yeah, not a, a good rod though. Yeah, um, good. They're all good. It has got the Marla Motorsport bearings. Mains look like they've done something, but very little. Yeah. It crank is bad. yeah, crank is standard on the mains and the big ends. Big ends, very weirdly. Now this thing has run definitely because the well, you can see the yeah, all of that and um, little bit of scuffing on the piston and stuff. This is it, but it's got brand new big end shells in it, which haven't even run. So whether someone has just put some big end yeah, shells so in those it, little, or those little marks, you can easily get them just from turning just it from over. Just from turning it over, bench, mate. Yeah, sort of probably thing. not as clean as it should have been. Um, so yeah, bottom end, absolutely perfect. It's got six long studs. Yep. Piston crowns have been machined for 10th hour protrusion. So someone, about, about perfect, someone really. knows what they're doing. 
Yep. Um, I expect looking at the crown there, just visually, it's probably about eight to one. I shouldn't, it's not a low comp piston that, which is good. Um, and it's a really good block. As I say, it's been bored very freshly to 0.5 oversize. Yep. Um, so 91.325 and the bores are completely unworn. A little yeah, bit glazy, are. but absolutely fine. Well, if it maybe it's only done a little bit of running in mileage or something. Very and, little, yeah. And just um, may have glazed up if it was running a bit too rich or something. But yeah, that's it. So absolutely surprised by this. Um, really good. So I'm going to hone a little bit out the bores, providing they measure fine. Take the long studs out. Probably end up having to put the two deeper. Usually the case in it that go on the core yeah, plug so side. Yes, you have to do that. Uh, we're going to face the block. So it's really, there ain't a lot needs to be done. Very Just little, face mate. the block, maybe do your little long stud mod, you know, go a little bit deeper. Yeah. Um, and then it's just clean and rebuild, isn't it? Really? It is really. It's got a big wing sump on it. Nice. Two wheel drive, big wing sump. We've got to, it's got a gated baffle. Ooh. Homemade, but it's a very good yeah, it looks gated good. baffle there. Looks well done. Um, so we've got to put a couple of fittings in this sump for Russell to run a WRC breather. And that really is the bottom end. Yep. Headwise, very good head. Huh? It is. Um, so the ports are 24 and a half on the inlet. Sorry, 24 and a half on the exhaust, 25 and a half on the inlet. And it's a solid lifter setup. And we all oh, know right. how pricey and time consuming yeah. that is. Well, it's, yeah, a good amount of money just for the kit, let alone setting the thing up properly with it. Exactly, and, you know. yeah. Um, it's got a pair of Newman cams in it. Now I've measured the Newman cams. It's got a 38 mil base circle and we've got a 9.6 lift on the exhaust and a 10.6 on the inlet. So I've ran Ken Newman. There's no identification marks on the end of the cam like usual. And he said that's very odd and he's got no recollection of the sizes on this, the lifts. Dwell, mm -hmm. dwell we can't tell. Um, but he said, I expect that's probably a custom grind for someone. So he reckons he's probably done like a custom job. Yeah. Away from any normal sort of spec. That's it, yeah. For somebody in, you know, specifically. Yeah. So Russell was a bit concerned that they would be very wild cams, which he doesn't want to run because he's got a modified T34. So he wants to run just over 400 horsepower. Yeah. Um, but Ken said they'd be absolutely fine for that. You know, they're not a wild cam. No. So we can get away with using them, mate. So all we're going to have to do is strip the head out, check the guides, check the seats and et cetera, and yep. blast the head. And um, jobs are good, isn't it? Proper, yeah. So it's nice to have a bit of good news, especially for a, a good friend of mine like Russell. And um, he's a great character. Yeah. So it's nice that something's worked out for him. It's unusual, to be honest, with the Cosworth. So it's not, not every day that we get one that's actually pretty good no this is it um especially for the money he's paid for it so absolutely wonderful yeah so that's a deal hell of a deal so this motor when it's done is going to be going into his sapphire two-wheel drive he's going to take the engine out put it to one side because it's a matching numbers motor and he's going to put this one to uh, run bigger right. power so you don't want to faff around with that which yeah. is a good idea yeah really. fair play um so that's russell sorted Next video, guys, we're going to be stripping this one here. I've took the head off it, um, haven't measured anything yet. This one has been built by a local firm. When, when I say local, I mean down this end of the country. Yeah. Um, it's been built by him and he's got a bit of a tapping noise. So he wants us to just investigate it, see what's going on. So we should be stripping that and um, putting that in the next video. So that's it, mate, for today's video. Let us know what you think down in the comments. If you've got any um, suggestions or whatever for the Mark III Focus RS. And uh, we will see you in another video. Cheers, guys. Mm -hmm.